Lisa here, the Frugal Crafter. I have a really fun project for you today that's great to do with the kids for birthday party, for summer camp, or just a mom on board type of day, like snow days or, I don't know, summer vacation maybe. We're going to decorate these gorgeous canvas bags that come in all shapes and sizes from Paper Mart. You can find them online at www.papermart.com. We're going to use a scrap of fabric, put a pocket in the back. We're going to use some buttons and some beautiful fabric flowers that are also some from Paper Mart, and some glitter and some paint, and we're going to make this really cute customized canvas bag for the kids or maybe for yourself because it's pretty cool. Let's go to the table and I'll show you how it's done. To make this bag you're just going to need a few simple ingredients. Um, we're going to make a pocket so that you know somebody can put their treasures in there. You're going to need a canvas bag. You're going to need some fabric, just a, you know, a scrap or, you know, maybe a fat quarter. And uh, you may want to add a little trim. We're also going to use some fabric flowers, some buttons, and um, some other just basic craft items such as fabric paint. So the first thing you want to do is make the pocket because that's going to need to glue flat. I like to put a piece of cardboard inside my bag whenever, whenever I'm going to decorate or paint or do anything on these because it really helps them um, hold up and if any paint seeps through, it doesn't seep through to the other side gluing your bag shut, which is always nice. If you want a little extra protection, you can even wrap your, um, your cardboard with a piece of waxed paper and that way if your kids are doing this and they get a little heavy handed with the glue or the paint, um, it'll easily be able to be removed later. So just put that in there and that's also going to hold your fabric kind of tight so if you want to paint on it or do anything even fancier it's going to be a lot easier. And then you want to take your fabric and you want to press over all the edges. I usually do the sides first and I've already pre-ironed this. And then you would want to press the bottom and the top so you end up with this nice neat rectangle. And then what I like to do is open it up just to make it a little bit easier because we're going to be gluing and not sewing here. And I like to snip the corners. Okay, you can kind of snip where they cross. And I always keep my um, a separate pair of scissors for ribbon and, i um, just trying to see where that crosses there, for ribbon and fabric and that way they're always sharp and ready to go for that type of project. So there's a tip for you. You don't even have to buy the most expensive pair, but just buy a pair and keep it se uh, separate for your sewing and your ribbon and it, it will really, you'll be glad you did. It's so much easier to cut with nice sharp scissors. And then since I've already pressed this, I can just get by with a little finger pressing here. So if you're a parent and you want to do this with your children or maybe you're a teacher or a camp director, I would do this part first just because you do have to press it. They're more, kids are more, um, are really good about, you know, gluing, but I would press it. So I'm just going to glue a little bit of glue. You don't want too much because you don't want it to leak through. Just a little bit on that edge there so that, um, this is going to be the top just so that will hold down. But I don't really need to do that under these panels because I find that the glue will, um, will absorb into the fabric and be fine for that. So I'm just going to do a little bit on the edges here. Go all the way up to the top and try to seal down that fabric right in the corner so it doesn't fray. And if you want to have a really shabby chic look, you could um, just not even bother pressing the edges and just put it on raw and, you know, it'll fray and kind of give you a neat look that way too. All right, and then you want to put this, center this up on the back of your bag here. And you might want a damp paper towel handy in case you want to uh, wipe off uh, your fingers. All right, and then um, I would take a little piece of folded up wax paper and just put it under here just where the pocket opens. That way if any of that glue that we used to hem down that top, if any of it seeped through, it's not going to glue your pocket shut because that's not what you want. And you want to set this aside to dry. You can even put something heavy on it if you want to, but this glue is pretty good. This is um, the Jewelit glue. You can use any fabric glue like Gemtac or Fabri-Tac and it will work really well. So as long as you're using a fabric glue, it's going to be fine. Or you could stitch it on. You don't have to use glue if you don't want to. I have one that's already prepared. So we got that already already uh, glued down. I did that a couple hours ago. And now I'm going to flip it over and keep the board in there and I'm going to do some painting. So what you're going to want is fabric paint for this or acrylic paints will work just fine. I happen to have, between my stash and my kids, we have plenty of fabric paint. So what I'm going to do is just use a light color and I'm going to draw on some flowers. I'm just going to draw some stems. I like to use this light uh, yellow to draw with because it's, um, it's kind of... Uh, flattering to all sorts of different designs. 
and it matches a lot of different colors. It's not, you know, too out there. Always put your caps on when you're not using them. These uh, fabric paints are great. I'm using several different brands here, but I'm, I'm very surprised at how they haven't clogged up, and I've had them for quite a while. And the nice thing about this is if you just use the applicators the way they are, you don't even have to dirty a paintbrush. You just kind of fill it in there. The thicker the paint, the longer it's going to take to dry, so just keep that in mind if you're working with kids. They're going to have to be patient or you're going to have to do this in stages and, you know, go occupy them some other way while we're in the uh, paint drying phase. Just fill that right in and do a little bit of this yellow in the middle. I'm actually going to use a paintbrush because it's a little bit quicker to do it that way. And I'm going to show you a really, uh, really easy way to do some little purple flowers. Make sure you wash your paintbrushes off because they are not going to, um, they're not going to do well if you let that paint dry on there. So you can actually kind of add a little green in there. Soften it with a paintbrush if you want to. But to make a really fun, like a little lavender or a hyacinth or something, just take some purple. And I've got several different shades and some are metallic. They're really fun. And just kind of do dots. And just keep in mind, we're going to be gluing down some fabric flowers and we're going to be embellishing as well so you want to have a you know make make sure you have some room to add some buttons I like to do things in threes if we're going to do more than one so let me do that and uh, we can even put some just some little buttons on top of those flowers later we don't have to make it super fancy something i do like to do that i found works really nice is to use the clear paper mark glitter because you'll still be able to see all the colors underneath just give it a little sparkle and uh, the kids are really going to like this and look at this i'm really shaking this glitter this glitter is so fine and the holes on this are just perfect so i am just getting enough i'm not wasting a lot of glitter because i won't be able to really pour that back in Let's see that i'm just getting what i need and i'm not wasting anything so now we're going to let that dry and i'm going to grab one that i've already done i have two different types of flowers here i have these beautiful satin rolled roses that i really like except they're wired and they're really dimensional and i'm afraid they may come off the bag if you know a kid is to play too aggressively with it so instead of what i'm going to use are these pretty country primitive shabby chic gingham ribbon flowers and i think i'll probably use one or two on this project and so I can lay it down and arrange it. I just really love the sparkle that that glitter has. Maybe put one up there. And then I'm also going to want to use some buttons. So I like to go through my button bins and try to find a few buttons that are really going to enhance my project. And you can even put them down in the ground like they're flowers. And you can put them on the petals. You know, however you want just to make it really you. And I think this is a super fun project for the kids to do because you can clean out your button jar. You can use whatever you have on hand. These um, bags are fabulous to decorate and they come in so many different sizes. So whether you want to make a lunch bag or you want to make a beach bag or whatever you can certainly find something that is going to fit your uh, your personality and be really useful actually i think i like it just with those three buttons there all right so again we're going to use the um fabric glue this is a jewel it which i've used this for years i really like it um but if you have something comparable at home go ahead and try that uh, you could even use like a um a hot glue design for fabric I don't know if that's as durable as um, this julep glue. When I'm doing these little ribbon flowers, I'm actually going to try to get the tips down there because I don't want them to catch on anything and come off. And just make sure you press it down. You can always put a piece of waxed paper over this and like a, um, a bean bag or something just to kind of hold it down while it's drying. But this is a pretty quick grabbing glue and I really haven't had much, um, much trouble with it. And these three buttons in here. And if the, you know, if you get too much glue on there, the glue won't seep to the back side because we have um, cardboard in there. If you don't have, uh, and if you are working with kids and you're afraid they're going to be too heavy handed, as a reminder, just, you know, wrap that cardboard with wax paper before you put it in and it will, it'll be fine. 
So there you have it. That's how you make a custom little bag with a pocket using pre-made canvas bags from Paper Mart. Please check out all the wonderful things Paper Mart has to offer, like glitter and ribbons. I wanted to show you, you can really customize the um, the pockets with the ribbons too. If I grab this one that I've already done, you could do a little bit of grow grain across the top there. Grow grain doesn't fray, so it's great to add after the fact. And there's so many cute little embellishments that you could find there from fabric flowers to ribbons to so much more. I want to thank my sponsor and if you do shop over there please tell them Lindsay sent you you can find them at www.papermart.com where we make you look even better thank you so much for watching until next time happy crafting